Germany was divided into two different countries for more than 40 years. In this video, we're going to explore the history behind the cassette carousel from the former east side. Let's jump into it. After the Second World War, Germany was destroyed and ravaged by one of the most bloody confrontations in the history of mankind. In 1945, the Soviet Union, the US and the UK met in Potsdam to decide the new shape of post-war Europe. But the conflict of powers in between the Soviet Union and the US turned what it was meant to be a new era of self-determination and peace into an all-out ideological war between communism and capitalism, popularly called Cold War. The decision was made to divide Germany up into autonomous eastern and western reparation zones, stripping the country of geographical, political and economical unity. In 1949, these reparation zones became the Federal Republic of Germany on the west, controlled by the US, France and the UK, and the German Democratic Republic on the east, controlled by the Soviet Union. It's important to mention that Berlin was located in the former Soviet partition, but was also separated into east and west. The GDR, also known as German Democratic Republic or East Germany, became a satellite state of the Soviet Union. Soviet occupation authorities began transferring administrative responsibility to the German communist leaders in 1948, and the GDR began to function as a state in 1949. However, Soviet forces remained in the country throughout the Cold War. Until 1989, the GDR was governed by only one party, the Socialist Unity Party of Germany, the SED. The German war reparations owed to the Soviets impoverished the Soviet zone of occupation and severely weakened the East German economy. In between 1945 and 1946, the Soviets confiscated and transported to the USSR approximately 33% of the GDR's industrial plant, and by the early 1950s had extracted some $10 billion worth of reparations in agricultural and industrial products. The poverty of East Germany, induced by reparations, provoked the Republic Flucht, also known as the desertion from the Republic to West Germany, further weakening the GDR's economy. Western economic opportunities induced a brain drain. In response, the GDR closed the inner German border, and on the night of the 12th of August 1961, East German soldiers began erecting the Berlin Wall. While the dismantling of industrial capacity had a significant effect, the most important factor in explaining the divergence in economic performance was the separation of the Eastern Zone from its traditional West German market. The East German economy was dominated by consumer goods manufacturers and depended on raw materials and intermediate goods found exclusively in the West. Since the GDR had to buy almost all raw materials at high prices on the world market or exchange them for manufactured goods, there was often a material shortage. So it was a legitimate goal to manufacture consumer goods as durable as possible in order to save foreign currency. Thanks to this strategy, many devices built in the GDR are well known for their longevity, beauty and good design. Former Bauhaus students were also involved in the reconstruction of East Germany. As product designers or teachers, they contributed to the design and manufacture of East German products and work at well-known training centers. Functionality and the reduction to the essentials were typical of the GDR design. Many brands still enjoy a great reputation, like the Practica cameras with their MTL5B model, considered today in 2020 a fantastic entry-level SLR camera, or some of the radios or TVs manufactured by RFT, the national telecommunications company, who made the first color TV producing the GDR, the RFT Color 20. Bevel share shavers and kitchen appliances can also be found in working conditions nowadays in households all over Germany, like the RG28 mixer or the Bevel share Universal. A special feature of all these activities in the GDR was that some production facilities were integrated into design training centers and the schools cooperated with each other and with the industry. In this way, although not always politically frictionless, products with high design standards could also be created which to this day enjoy a great reputation in design circles. Probably the most renowned college for design in the GDR was, and is to this day, Burgivischenstein University of Art and Design in Halle. The famous Finnish designer Tapio Wirkala was of the opinion that the world's best design education was in Halle. 
Perhaps the popularity of the school among Scandinavians, whose design formation was inspired by Halle, contributed to its excellent reputation. Parallels between the sober, pragmatic Scandinavian design canon and the GDR design are obvious. Halle is the largest city of the German state of Saxony and Halt, and during the GDR was an economic and educational center. But of course, most of its institutions were established well before the division of Germany. One of those establishments was a provincial facility for the blind, founded in 1898, making it one of the country's first state-owned organizations devoted to the help of the visually impaired. During the years, it grew as a home, a school and a training facility where people got to learn different professions. In 1953, in the former East Germany, it changed its name to Production Cooperative of the Blind. It was both the first craft cooperative in the Halle district and the first blind craft cooperative in the GDR. One goal was a reorientation of traditional blind professions, such as brushmakers, towards industrial work. Thus, the cooperative not only played a pioneering role in the socialist restructuring of the handicrafts in the GDR, but also in opening up new professional fields for the blind and visually impaired. One of the products built at the Halle State Facility for the Blind was a beautiful cassette carousel meant to store and display people's cassette collections. The individual parts made of plastic were manufactured in the Halle Ammendorf plastic plant and employees of the production cooperative for the blind assembled the boxes. They came in many different vibrant colors and can be found today on eBay for around 15 euros. Some of them are quite rare and can go for as much as 50 euros, but I'm not gonna say which ones to avoid any scalpers out there. I found this particular gold white model to fit really well next to our kitchen cassette radio and it's a nice way to present a limited tape collection. The cassette carousel could not only be bought on the Eastern Bloc, for they were also exported to West Germany and Austria. The GDR and West Germany signed the Basic Treaty in 1972, recognizing each other as sovereign states for the first time. Only three years later, in 1975, Austria signed a consular treaty with the GDR, making it the first Western country to ever sign such a contract with East Germany, as well as acknowledging GDR citizenship. In West Germany, they were sold by Quell, a giant mail order company, and because 8% of the exports from the GDR were bought by West Germany and West Berlin, this cassette rack can be found today all over Germany. It's also a part of the collection exhibited at the DDR Museum in Berlin. DDR is the German word for GDR, which means Deutsche Demokratische Republik. Its exhibition depicts life in the former East Germany in a direct way. For example, people can try GDR clothes on in the recreated tower block apartment, change TV channels or use an original typewriter. The positives as well as the negative sides of the GDR are explored in this exhibition and it's a great visit for someone interested in the way of life of East German citizens. I hope you enjoyed the video. When I was searching for a small cassette story solution, I never imagined that I could stumble upon an item with such rich history. I'm really looking forward to discover other former East German products in the future. Thanks for watching. Until next time.